Absolutely, this is probably the biggest upgrade we've done to this bike. I introduce to you the Hunt Wheels Mason X Hunt 650B Adventure Wheel Set. I picked up these rims for $479 less a 10% discount. These rims have a 25 millimeter internal width, which is actually quite a bit bigger than the 19 or 20 internal width of the stock wheel set. This is going to allow me to run a much bigger tire size. The wheel set is incredibly lighter at a claimed weight of 1,594 grams. And this is going to be a substantial difference in weight savings versus the stock wheel set. Not only is this bike getting a new wheel set, but it's also getting new Kenda tires and a pair of Tannis armor inserts. I have some Kenda Booster Pros in 2.4 width that we can put on the new wheels. These are from my trail bike and hopefully they'll provide a better ride. The Tannis Armor inserts are a weight penalty of 150 grams each tire. I really hope that the weight penalty is worth it. Tannis supplied me with these inserts to feature in some videos, so thank you to them. The two inserts can be purchased for $99 or $127 if you want valves and sealant included. That's actually quite a bit less compared to say Kushcore. Speaking of Kushcore, their new Beadbro tool makes installing these inserts seriously easy. I also use Kushcore's beefy tire lever to help install the tires with the inserts. Oh no, so the wheels is just blowing air straight out the valve hole. These wheels came pre-taped from Hunts, but I have to say whoever taped them did an awful job. The tape that was installed was really loose and it caused air to escape from the valve holes. I don't know about you, but I really hate dealing with rim tape. Unfortunately, because of this, I have to start from scratch. Off camera, I went ahead and added a couple extra layers of rim tape. Hopefully that fixes it. Let's try this again. Now the first wheel is holding air, we can move on to the next. Time to rid this bike of its old wheel set. I need to move over the rotors and the cassette from the stock wheel set and move them over to the new wheels. Since these new wheels are center lock, I'll actually have to use adapters from Hunt to install my six bolt rotors. All right, so the old wheel set weighed in at 4,888 grams. That includes tires, tubes, cassette, rotors, everything. The new wheel set comes in at 4,414 grams. That includes 300 grams of tire inserts. And even with the inserts, we saved 474 grams. That's a little more than one pound in weight savings. And that's actually really important because rotational weight matters a lot more than just unsprung weight. All right, now that the new tires are installed, we can check out the total weight of this bike. When we first started this whole series, the bike weighed in at 33 pounds. Now the bike comes in at 28 pounds. That's five pounds less than when we started. Can you ever imagine we would have gotten this $400 Dick's Hardtail down to 28 pounds? Right away, I felt like I had way more traction climbing, and even better is that I wasn't deflecting off each rock. I actually put in my best time yet of three minutes and 35 seconds. That's a full eight seconds faster than my previous best time and 32 seconds faster than the stock time. Moving on to the second climb, the new wheel set once again proves its worth by setting a time of six minutes and 13 seconds. I finally beat the stock time of six minutes and 45 seconds. It only took to the last episode to do it. Moving on to the first downhill, I set a time of one minute and 32 seconds, which is eight seconds faster than the previous best and way faster than the stock time of two minutes and 16. The ride felt incredibly smoother and I actually forgot I was on a hardtail. The fast and flowy section also sees an improved time of one minute and 18, 
beating our previous best of 120 and the stock time of one minute 40 seconds. Hands down, these upgrades to this bike made the biggest change yet. Judging by how I blew away all my previous best times for every segment, I think it's safe to say that this was money well spent. The Tannis armor did an amazing job allowing me to run much lower tire pressures than I previously had. With the old setup that included tubes, I was running 24 PSI front and 26 rear. With the Tannis inserts, I was able to run 17 in the front and 19 in the rear. With the lower tire pressure came better grip and a crazy smooth ride. Just how far has this bike come? Let me put something into perspective. On the full Randall Henderson downhill, today's run came in at three minutes, 26 seconds, which is only two seconds slower than my previous best ever time ever. And that's even on my intense primer. And that's really saying something because that's a $7,000 bike. The first upgrade to this bike was the Bucklos Lutu Air Fork. It really changed the ride significantly and gave us back a working front suspension. However, if you're serious about mountain biking, I really can't recommend it. I punished this fork during this series and now it's actually really starting to creak. I think this fork is good for someone who is just going to do very light cross country riding and just wants an air fork versus a heavy coil fork. The second upgrade to this bike was a pair of Shimano MT500 hydraulic disc brakes. I totally can recommend this upgrade for anybody who's still rocking mechanical disc brakes. The difference between the two really was night and day. You can spend a little bit more and get a nice set of Dior or even SLX brakes that are going to have some better features. Next up, I replaced all the contact points and this is where the GT Laguna Pro really started to look like a proper mountain bike. The new wider bars and short stem was the real standout and while the dropper post was the close second, the grips and pedals made for a all around better ride. The Box 3 Prime 9 drivetrain along with the Ganopper cranks brought this bike into a modern drivetrain. Its wide range cassette paired with the 32 tooth chainring up front gave me all the range I needed in a much simpler drivetrain versus the old 3x system that was there previously. In total, I spent around $1,400 in upgrades on this bike, not including the $290 worth of parts that were supplied by Tag Metals and Tannis Armor. Thank you to them. You can also help support the channel by picking up merch, joining Patreon, and using that thanks button down below. Overall, this series was incredibly fun to make. Let me know what you think should be next.